Welcome to the Church at Rock Creek Online. I'm Jason Curry, and I'm upset with both of you guys. Okay. Well, get it out. I thought we needed yeah. to go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's been two years of this, and we thought, uh, I thought, why not just air it right here, live? And so then I didn't prepare you for this, did no, I? No, you didn't. <laughs> I have no idea what's coming. All right, so here's the story. All right. Um, a couple of weeks ago, um, uh, Madeline, who does our social media, uh, posted this picture. I'm on the way home from church. I'm feeling pretty good about myself. Uh -huh. People's lives have been changed. I Certainly. got to be a part of a, a baptism. Like things are going great in my life. And uh, here's the picture that she posts. All right. And I want you guys to notice right here what's happening on the back of my head right oh, there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There it is. First time. First time what? That I know that I knew. How did you miss something that, that significant? <laughs> that I knew that this is happening. I'm driving down the road and I looked on my phone and I thought, this is a filter. She's done this to me. Like to see if really, I'll find it. Really? I really did. I'm not exaggerating this. <laughs> because that is something that he would so, do, right? Yes, yeah, it yes, is. Yeah. It's absolutely. So I'm looking at this and I thought, no way. So here's what I did. Okay. Um, so I went home. This is just going to let you know that uh, really God can save anybody. I uh, I went on Amazon and started looking at the reviews on what I'm supposed to do. That was, that was my <laughs> response. Right I've been working on it. I've been working on it. I think so, you have. So, no, this gets even better. <laughs> so I went on Amazon, and I, and I thought, you know, it's kind of like Elvis. A million people can't be wrong, that kind of thing. And so I'm reading the reviews, and I ordered the <laughs> shampoo in, and I waited a day. And then I realized the shampoo's going to come in. Courtney's going to see it in the shower, and she's going to ask me, hey, what's this hair growth? Um, shampoo. And so I'm not kidding you folks. Please, I'm not kidding you. I, I just passively said, hey, I ordered some new shampoo um, that's supposed to, you know, help with hair growth uh, in case. She's in the kitchen. She doesn't look up at me. She says, saw that picture of you baptizing, didn't you? <laughs> hey, this is great. Just straight out. Yeah. Just straight out. And I said, and you didn't say anything, huh? And she said, well, I didn't. I didn't know how to say something. I said, well, you've been seeing it. Like, it's not like I can't see the back of my head. It gets worse. Now, this part, this is him right here. So I start to tell him what I'm going to use this as an illustration. And he says, yeah, it's like sin. The rest of us have been seeing it, but you couldn't. <laughs> so both of you oh, had seen it too oh, and not I, said anything about no, it. No, no, I don't think I've noticed it. Oh, oh no. He didn't pay attention I, to you. Okay? I would have I would have been calling you rabbi, I think, if I had seen you that. You know, I, know, like I think the, the filter enhanced it. I think the filter has enhanced it. You think? Yeah, we're supposed to be focused on I've decided to follow Jesus, but right, all we're focused on and on, we can't do it. All right, I'm getting rid of that. <laughs> Listen. So I decided to, to, I wanted to name the series Hair Loss and Sin, but we decided Dude, yeah. against that. That would be good. No. So the series is called this. It's always something, right? I, and, and I want you to think about it uh, three ways. I really did when I saw it. I thought, my gosh, like you guys know, I've been working on my health. You uh, get things going right in your marriage. Maybe you make some good moves financially and you're not stressed about that and something else happens. Something breaks, something goes wrong, something happens. It's always something. It's always something. So if you'll hang with me for the next three weeks. So here's what we're going to talk about first. Um, it's always something with me. Like I, got, I always got something going on, right? And then <laughs> there's always something going on around me. And the third week, if you'll stay all the way through, there's always something that God wants to do through me. Even in the things that are going on in me and the things that are going on around me, there's always something that God is doing. So let's take my hair loss and the embarrassment uh, of the picture, right? And uh, let's talk about something that we don't really like to talk about. Let's talk about the sin in our lives. Now, a, a little short story here that'll help as well. I took macroeconomics at Hendrix, and I was not good at it. That's not surprising. But I had two different tutors that tried to help me. Uh, the first tutor really made me feel stupid. I mean, came in, and from the first uh, uh, words that he said, um, was talking down to me and at me, and you'll probably never get this. And I felt he was judging me instead of trying to help me. And the second tutor came in, and she had compassion for me. Now, she knew I needed help, and I didn't know what I was doing. But I was willing to listen um, because she wasn't trying to uh, make fun of me or call me out or make me feel stupid. And so I, I, I really do want you to hear this. I, I think this is our heart from a teaching standpoint. Sin's a real thing. 
uh, scripture is, is uh, uh, full of us dealing with our sin. Our sin's why Jesus had to come. Uh, sometimes preachers want to shy away from that, and that's not loving. But when we just start attacking everybody, that's not loving either. And so what I want to tell you, I'm not trying to hurt you or trying to get you. We, we want to help you. And uh, I think you'd be, if you're being honest, you'd say this. There's probably always something that you're dealing with. Scripture points to that. And, and, and what is it? Well, sin is anything in our life that's disobedient to God. And, and it's really worse than you think. It's the things that we do. Uh, sometimes it's the things that we think. Even our motives can be sinful. We can do the right thing for the wrong reasons and it be sinful. I mean, it's just uh, drastic what happens. And then we find out that it's a constant battle. Even when we become Christians, we're always struggling against sin. And the Christian life's not static. It's, it's a battle. All of us are always dealing with this. It's always something. So what do we do? We throw up our hands and say, that's just the way I am, or that's just the way it's going to be, or everybody's like me. Well, that's not what really Scripture tells us to do. So let, let's work together on what's going on in your life that you may go, hey, it's not something everybody can see on the outside, but boy, I wish we could do something about it. So look, it, what's so good is that I, uh, we can look right in here in Scripture and see. Uh, right here, clear, it's always something. 1 John 1, 8 through 10, it'll be right there on the screen, says this. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. That's pretty bold right there. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. You see, even though we're Christians, this battle's not going away. John's writing that this battle with sin, it's been a past thing, a present thing, a future thing, but in Christ, we have hope. Now, uh, it, the cliff notes here are this. When I put my faith in Christ, I'm free from the penalty of sin forever. And because of the power of Christ, I can overcome sin through his power. I, but I'm not free from the presence of sin. Okay, we're always going to battle that. So what do we do? First thing I want you to write this down. And if you got hair loss problems going on, it's the first step there too. You got to be honest. You got to be honest. I mean, if I, if I act like it's not there, if I uh, try to excuse it, if I try to run from it, nothing's ever going to change. That's what verse 8 is about. If we claim to be without sin. Now, you know these folks. I don't need Jesus. I don't need church. I'm a pretty good person. Now, the folks that claim that they don't have sin, John says they deceive themselves. And the truth is not in them, right? Not only that, that if we claim that we've never sinned, that we've just been good our whole life. We make God out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. You see, we're going to have to start at an honest place, and that honest place is this, that God's perfect, and he's holy, and he's good, and we're not. And we're always struggling and dealing with something, and every one of us has a past where we struggled and dealt with sin. Romans 3.23 says this, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It's not just me. It's not just Mark and Greg. It's, it's all of us that are in this together. Proverbs 29 says, Who can say I have kept my heart pure? I am clean and without sin. Now, listen, here's the real issue. I don't think there's a lot of people that would argue with me on that in our culture. Some of the religious elite folks that I think John was really trying to talk to here might push back from it because their um, righteousness was based on their own works. Here's where our culture is. Our culture would say this. Yeah, you're right, Jason. All of us have sinned, so what's the big deal? And that's not where we find freedom. There's three traps in dealing with our sin. The first one is we try to justify it and say it's not a big deal. The other one, maybe you're here, we try to excuse it and say it's not just me. And then maybe this is where you are. You're denying it. It's not really sin. I mean, you can see it in Scripture, but you found a group of people to tell you that it's reasonable, that everyone battles with something. And what I want to tell you in love is this. You're never going to live the life that God's called you to until you're honest about the truth of what sin is and the distance your life is from that truth. So guys, here's what I want us to talk about. Um, I, I wrote this down. If we're not honest about our sin, we never confront it. We hide it, we justify it, we ignore it. So 
How does someone watching this right now get out of that pattern and trap that, that I think becomes pretty comfortable? Mm-hmm. What do you think? I, I, think the, I think the way you have to do this is it, it has to be, uh, you have to keep your accounts current. Okay. You know, what I think happens to us is that if we don't do sort of a spiritual checkup, on ourselves on a regular basis, what happens then, it's sort of like barnacles on a, the hull of a ship. They mm. just sort of attach and you go along and there's more of them and they build up. And if you ever and ever look beneath the surface yeah. on the hull of that ship, you don't know, but you stop being, that, that ship does not sail as fast. It doesn't go as efficiently through the water. And I think that's what happens to us. We don't look beneath the surface we and, and what happens it's the build up it's the accumulation that they the, the sin just builds up and it does it so gradually that we don't know yeah. until we find I, so I, th- a slow I think slow grow there yeah, yeah i think you have to say current you have to ask uh, last week's message it's like I, I said you have to ask the question how are we doing god yeah you know and you do, do that regularly not just once you know ever <laughs> Decade. Yeah. yeah. And it, uh, I think what you're saying, the slow growth, there's a lot of folks that struggle with sin, and where they're at now is not where they began. Yeah. You know, that, uh, get back to what, so what Greg says, that verse 8 says, if we claim, so check what we claim. Yeah. Check yeah. our claim. Yeah. And then uh, the, the, I think the next step that's really important to, you don't let it build up, and uh, is that don't compare yourself to somebody else. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah that's because good. you start comparing yourself to somebody else, you will always find somebody that's that's worse than you. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So don't compare yourself to somebody else. You take your life and say, "Okay, how am I doing, God, yeah. compared yeah. to what you want yeah. me to be?" Yeah. yeah, that's the wrong. Yeah. That's the right standard. The, we compare yeah. ourselves to the wrong standard. Yeah. We yeah. lower the yeah. bar. Yeah. 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 Any anybody that's got kids knows this. Because your kid does a, uh, gets a bad grade, and what do they come home and tell you? Everybody, Everybody did. Everybody and I didn't did. do as bad as everyone <laughs> yeah, else in the yeah, class. Yeah, yeah. And so we don't want to be honest about the fact that we did bad. So and, we, and usually, not only that, Mark, I think we find people who struggle with sin that we've never struggled with to make ourselves feel better. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And go, Their sin's worse than our yeah, sin. Yeah, how yeah. awful are, are those folks? So, so I want you to hear me. There'll, there'll never be a biblical freedom, a peace inside, until you first start and you establish this. God's word's God's word. Sin is sin. The problem's not God's word. The problem's me, right? Yeah, it, I, I think that's the thing. It, self-deception is the worst kind of deception of all. Right. We are. We want to make the enemy someone else or something else out there. We're our own worst enemy. That's yeah. self-deception yeah. And, and lack of honesty because we deceive ourselves and we think we're, we're okay. Yeah. That's the worst. And, and I, I really got enticed into this uh, uh, high school years. I, I grew up in a, in a really spiritual home. And there was this lure of the false sense of peace of just go party and just be you. Mm-hmm. And I was envious of those kids who could do that and not have any consequences at home. I'm thankful that my parents didn't do that because there's a false sense of peace mm-hmm. in justifying, excusing, and denying. And if you're listening with your heart, there's something that goes on inside where you say, you know what, this is wrong. And there is an accounting. So. Well, well, what do we do with that? And if you're sitting there and you go, Jason, you don't have to tell me. I, I know exactly what it is. I don't know what to do with it. Well, the second thing is this. I want you to write this down. Be humble. Be humble, right? John says this in, in verse 9. If we confess our sins, right? So we've been honest about it. Yeah, it is sin. Like I'm not claiming to not be without it. So what do I do with it? I turn to God. Well, that's a repentance, right? That's what the biblical word means. I'm going to turn away from the way that I was going and confess. Well, what are we confessing? That this is wrong. That I need help. That I can't change this on my own. That this has gotten out of control. It's one of my favorite things uh, about our church for so many years is Rock Creek has been a place where people who struggle with things that maybe um, throughout history other church people have said, how could you do that? That this has been a place where you could come and confess those things and get help and be healed. But all of those things start with humility. They really do. Psalm 139. Listen to what David writes here. Search me, God, and know my heart. Mm -hmm. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. That's what you were just saying. Mm -hmm. Keep an accounting, right? Mm -hmm. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Can I ask you this? How much different is that than someone who's saying this? I got it. I got it all together. I'm, I'm a good person. 
boy, I, I've been to church on Sunday, preacher, you can save this. I, I'm not as bad as all those other folks, or you might even say this. Yeah, I've never killed anybody or done anything really bad. That, that pride, that pride will cause you to miss out on who it is that God's called you to and can really cause you to miss out on the kingdom of God entirely. Hey, James 4.10 says, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up. What does that mean? There's got to be a moment in your life where you realize this, you can't save yourself. There's got to be a moment where you realize you can't change yourself. There's got to be a moment that you understand that if the standard is holiness and perfection, that you're going to fall short of that. And what do you need? You need a Savior. You need a Redeemer. Someone to cleanse you, to turn you into what you can't turn yourself into, and that's someone who is righteous. There's three traps here that really, really, really get you in humility. You, you preached a, uh, a fantastic sermon on this. Uh, pride. Pride says, I don't need help. It's not, a, you're right. Fear. Fear says it might cost me. How many folks, you, and uh, I'm asking you about this here in a minute, right now are dealing with addiction, but fear is keeping them from getting the help that they need, right? What's everybody going to think, right? I'm telling you, until you have a, uh, take a step of humility, you're never going to get help. The third one is this, and I know a lot about this. It's rebellion. I'm not going to be humble because I'm calling the shots. It's my life. It's the 1980s rock anthem, right? Like, I can do what I want. Don't tell me what to do. And real freedom is found in trusting, in submission, in humility uh, with God. And if we never turn to God, we're never going to get the help. So pride, fear, rebellion, I think are the three main reasons that are the really the, the roadblocks to uh, humility. So for both of you guys, uh, in, in your time and, and as pastor, w which one of those is the most common? I, it, it's hard because... I think yes <laughs> to all of them. And I think fear is a much bigger deal than what we Get what we give to. it credit yeah. because the fear is, okay, what if I change? What will my life really be like? Lose friendships, lose yeah. business. What lose will money? I lose? Yeah. And is the loss worth whatever the gain would be? Yeah. And and at the heart, you know, that's a that's a rebellion. It's a at, at the heart of it is a there's pride involved in that, but really the surface deal is that I'm, I'm afraid, you know, like with, you talk about addiction, um, it's the fear really is, okay, so what's tomorrow going to be like if I quit doing this today? Yeah, yeah. And you came, so uh, I don't know if these folks know this, before you started Rock Creek, you were a student pastor. Yeah. And so the message for years for students has been this, if you, if you, if you keep running with the same crowd, you're never going to go towards Christ. And for a student, the real fear is that I'm going to be alone. Yeah, yeah. Nobody's going to be there. Yeah. And that doesn't change. I thought that that changed when you got to be an adult. Boy, it sure doesn't, does it? <laughs> no. And so, you, you know, you have to have to decide uh, if you're going to change your circle. Yeah. Because your circle, if it's the same types of people, or yeah. that some of them literally the same people, that you ran with in high school and college, mm -hmm. then you become like your circle. Yeah. And you cannot miss that, that you become like your circle and you see what happened to their life, his life or her life last month, last year. Yeah. If you keep running with that circle, yeah. you're looking at yourself maybe two or three years because you might just be a little bit smarter than they are yeah. and be able to avoid it. Yep. And that cert the, the fear, so these build, those are the folks that are justifying, excusing it, saying it's just the way you are. And we like to flock to those folks that make us feel like, it's not going to cost us, but it yeah. does. Greg, yeah. what do you think? Yeah. Which well, they are. They, they, you said they build. They're connected almost like links in a chain. That, you know, uh, People can have pride, but sometimes that pride is born out of fear because they want to, they're, they're, it's insecurity or whatever, sure. and it produces that pride. Uh, and sometimes even rebellion is, again, it's that, that pride. I've got to protect myself. And uh, how, you know, it, yeah. it's, it's, it's that. But. You know, you cited it uh, more than once that I preached a message uh, several weeks ago, life's most dead, life's deadliest sin. And I, I really do think it's pride. I think yeah. that uh, that goes back to the self-deception that, uh, that you talked about in verse 8. Yeah. Uh, it's this pride, and it goes back to what Mark said uh, earlier in our comparing 
to other people, we get prideful because I'm not that bad or I'm better than that person. Yeah. And it gives you that pride. And as long as you got pride, you don't have that sense of need that you're talking about. Absolutely. Because if I'm, if I'm proud, then I don't, I'm good. Recognize I need anything. Yeah. And so if I don't need anything, I'm certainly not going to turn to yeah. God. And, and, and everybody who's ever put their faith in Christ did, did so through humility. Yeah. There was a brokenness, a spirit of, I can't do this on my own. I can't go back and undo what I've done. And I'm tired of living like this. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 28, 13 says, Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper. But the one who confesses and renounces, uh, them, they find mercy. I mean, think about that. Yeah, What's mercy? It's when you don't get what you do deserve. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's when the judgment of God uh, biblically passes over me because it lands squarely on Jesus. Uh, that's not coming through your pride. That's always going to be built on uh, humility, right? And so the, the third one is this. The third one is this. I want you to be hopeful. I want you to be hopeful. Things do not have to stay where they are. Jesus is in the business of changing people. Now, I'm hopeful, and I've got a new goal, all right? This is what I'm hoping to look like. <laughs> this is it right here, all right? We're, we're in the world. My gosh. What year is that? Oh, my gosh. I don't know what year it is, but you know what? Kirksey had hair. Look I'm at that. Telling you, that I I'm, did covert operations to get that. I'm telling you. I'm, I guess I'm trying to remember where <laughs> I was there. This is at First Baptist, full head of hair. That's what it says <laughs> right on the front no, of the No, that was not First Baptist. That First Baptist, not. full head of hair. I don't know where <laughs> that was. I you had a lot find of hair. I'm telling you what, right? Now, I, I, I'm, I'm not a prosperity gospel guy, but I've been praying this every morning, folks. I'm telling you, right? Be hopeful. Uh, we're, we're laughing about it. But the truth is this. Uh, God can change us eternally, and he can change your life right now. I want to say it again because we don't believe it right now in our culture. God can change things eternally, and he can change our life right now. John says he's faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. He can change things. That's the story of the Bible. Zacchaeus comes back out giving away money. Nobody thought that that could happen. The woman at the well comes out and she's not looking for the next relationship. She's looking for the next person that she can change. Paul is not killing people anymore. Instead, he, he's writing and preaching. Peter's not cutting people's ears off anymore. And I'm telling you, in every one of those lives, there was someone that said, we'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see yeah. how long this will last, right? The old joke we, uh, um, we in our worship center, boy, you got to come join us, is uh, we got this light up that says people matter to God, right? And uh, I was joking with some uh, guys, some ushers this last Sunday, and one of them said, boy, when I walk across that, it says other people matter to God. <laughs> <laughs> or the old song, uh, when you used to get saved at church, they would sing, I'm so glad you're a part of the family of God. There's some folks that said, when I got saved, uh, they sang, I'm surprised you're part of the family of God, right? <laughs> the, the truth is this. Uh, sometimes we don't want to believe that God can change us. It's one of the greatest lies that Satan uses to keep yeah. us where we are. Uh, Jesus can change anybody. He really can. Uh, maybe you've never put your faith in Christ, but he can change you. And maybe the reason you've been honest, maybe even humble, but you're not hopeful that things can change because you've just believed the lie. This is the way it's always going to be. I want you to look at Psalm 32, 5. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. That means I didn't excuse it, right? There's an honesty there. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. There's humility. And what happens? You forgave the guilt of my sin. He makes us new. Changes us from the inside out. It, there's three traps here, okay? The first one is someone who says, this is just the way I am. And culture is really quick to tell you that Jesus can't change you. The other one is nobody ever changes and God can't fix me. And I want to tell you something. There's no way that you can read the Bible and believe that. It, there's just not. I mean, at the very basis of what we believe in Christianity is that God came to, from earth to heaven. Jesus came to live with us, predicted his death and resurrection, and pulled it off. And that power is what brought us from death to life. And you're trying to tell me that that power can't, can't save you from sin? It's just not biblical. It's just not. Jesus died and rose again so that we could be freed forever and live in victory now. So, guys, um, this one for me over the last couple of years, uh, 
I'm really kind of at war with this one in culture because even in the church it seems to be prevalent folks saying that's just the way you are. And when we say that's just the way we are and it's sinful, we may not realize it, but what we're saying is God can't change you. So how do we, how do we battle someone, who, how do we battle that thought for someone who's lived in sin for so long and, and just kind of believes this can't change? What do you think? I think you, you, think you answered the question by asking them a question. Do you, so do you think God made you this way? That's yeah. exactly right. That's exactly and, right. And if you think God made you this way, then why and, and and walk down that path? Yeah. Okay. Um, and and that's got to be dealt with because the answer that you would have to that impacts what you believe about the rest of the Bible. Yeah, it does. You know. Yeah, it does. So you might as well solve that now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I agree. There, there's a perverted uh, strain of theology right now that comes to that conclusion for some people that God made me this. I'm an addict. Yeah. Well, God made me an addict. Well, I, well, I, you know, I've just got this. I, I have a short fuse. Well, God made me that way. Yeah. God, you know, that's a really poor view of God. Mm-hmm. And if anything's clear in the Bible, it's that we're supposed to have a very high view of God. He is holy. He is good. Yeah. He is pure. And he didn't make us that way, and no. uh, and so uh, and so he and he sent his son so we wouldn't have to stay that way. That's big. We yeah. could change, and he would. Re- we could be redeemed. And so many, some of my favorite miracles are just the addition of blind since birth or crippled mm-hmm. oh, yeah. since birth. Mm-hmm. And so the idea is That's good. that the, 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 this person's whole existence, things have been this way, mm-hmm. and then Jesus. Yeah. Right, and from a theological standpoint, we're born into a fallen world with a sinful nature, and we embrace it. The hope is this: that we don't have to stay that way. Jesus brings us from death to life. Now, listen: every single day of your life, it's always something. You're going to battle with lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. You're going to go to war with those things every day on this planet. You'll never escape it. But you don't have to live defeated any of those days. That's what Paul wanted us to know in the New Testament. Jesus wanted us to know. John wants us to know. And so what I want you to hear is this. If you would put your faith in Christ today and then live your life in and on and built with your roots in Christ, you can live in the freedom that God's called you to even as you battle sin. So what's the point? What do we do? Okay. Be honest. Don't excuse it. Don't deny it. Don't justify it. Be humble. What does that look like? Two, two, two things today. For you watching this and you've never put your faith in Christ, you be humble and you bow your head and you put your knees on the ground and you ask Jesus to save you today. For the Christian, humble means this. You lean on the Christians around you and get some help that you need. Get some accountability. Get on the outside what's going on on the inside and confess it. Don't hide it anymore. And then all of us, be hopeful. You want to know why? Because yesterday we were dead in our sin, but today we have been made alive by Christ and glory. We don't have to stay the same. Hey, I I want to thank you for joining us. And there's a number right there. If you want to put your faith in Christ, text me. If you got something going on, text me. Maybe you got something going on that's really just killing your life and you haven't you didn't know when you could talk to someone about it and you don't want everybody in the world to know it. Text us right there. We'll get the right pastor in touch with you. Remember, we don't want to be the tutor that tells you you're, you're stupid and you can't do this and judge you and put you out. We want to be the tutor that sits down with the word of God and walks with you towards freedom. Let me pray for you. God, we we love you so much. Thank you for the folks that are watching this. Um, in the sin that they're dealing with, I, I pray that they would be honest about it and uh, um, that they would be humble, that they would turn to you, not away from you, not to the world, not to a fake sense of peace. And ultimately that we would be hopeful because Jesus, we know that you make all things new. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you're a normal Rock Creek person and you want to give your offering, go to church at rockcreek.com. We can't do this without you. We're so thankful for you. Lots of great things coming up. Keep following us on social media. Next week, we're going to talk about, it's always something, right? (laughs) Always something going on in the world around me. How do we handle that? Have a great week. Bye.